Okay. Um, what we have going on in this image is um, an example of um, how meiosis can produce four daughter cells from one parent cell. Um, so I want to go over this real quick because um, we're going to think about um, how meiosis can result in variation among the resulting gametes. Um, the first thing to notice is that there's two divisions during meiosis. Um, it starts with a diploid parent cell. And after the first division, we have two haploid daughter cells. And those cells um, each only have one chromosome of each pair. They are um, not genetically identical to the parent cell because the parent cell had two copies of every chromosome. Um, and then there's another division in meiosis that splits each of those daughter cells into two cells by breaking apart sister chromatids. So we end up with four haploid cells, one N haploid cells, and um, all of those are um, going to be genetically identical to one or the other of the two daughter cells that were uh, produced after meiosis one. So this daughter cell splits, but the resulting two daughter cells are the same. This daughter cell splits, but the resulting two daughter cells are the same. So we really are, are, are only producing two different kinds of cells for any one meiotic cell division. And the daughter cells only have one copy of each chromosome. Um, when you look at a real cell, you will see two copies of each chromosome, but you have no idea whether um, those chromosomes came from the maternal or the paternal parent. In this image, we're color coding our chromosomes so that we can kind of see visually where each of these chromosomes came from. So we'll say that the blue chromosomes came from um, this person's biological mother. Um, the red chromosomes came from this uh, person's biological father. And you can see that these two chromosomes, combination one, gives us um, the two chromosomes that came from the mother. For combination two, we see that um, these cells have the other two chromosomes, the one that came from the father. But chromosomes don't always get divided up the same way. Um, just because um, uh, we have one chromosome from the mother and one chromosome from the father for every single pair of chromosomes doesn't mean that during meiosis, one set of the daughter cells is going to get all of the chromosomes that came from the mother and the other is going to get all the chromosomes that came from the father. Instead, there's a variety of ways that these chromosomes can line up during meiosis one right here and therefore a variety of ways that they can split apart um, after meiosis one, and then it will retain um, the same chromosomal balance after meiosis two, because we're just getting an extra copy of each of those daughter cells. So here's what it looks like if we consider with just two um, pairs of chromosomes, the different possibilities. Um, one possibility is what we just saw, where when the chromosomes line up, during meiosis one, we have the mother's chromosomes on the left side, the father's chromosomes on the right side. When they split, we end up with one daughter cell that has only paternal or maternal chromosomes, and we have one chromosome that has only paternal chromosomes. Our resulting four daughter cells will have two that are um, both uh, the paternal chromosomes and two that are both the maternal chromosomes. And in this case, um, we're seeing that there is a difference in the alleles here. We're using a capital letter for one allele and a lowercase letter for another allele. And we have two genes that we're looking at, one on each of our chromosomes. But if these chromosomes line up the other way, so that we have the maternal chromosome on the left and the paternal chromosome on the right for the first chromosome and the other way around for the second chromosome, then after meiosis one, each of our cells has one maternal and one paternal chromosome. 
the one on the left has the maternal chromosome A and the paternal chromosome B. The one on the right has the paternal chromosome A and the maternal chromosome B. So we have two additional combinations of gametes that we can get. This happens with every single chromosome pair. For humans, this happens 20, with 23 different sets of chromosomes, 22 non-sex chromosomes, and then the X um, and Y, or the two X chromosomes, will all get divided um, randomly, which means for humans, there's two to the 23 possible arrangements of chromosomes. That's a two followed by 23 zeros. That's a lot of different arrangements. So because we have all these different arrangements, no two gametes are ever going to look exactly the same. And as a result, when we think about the potential genetic variation for an organism, we have to think about um, one gene at a time, or at the very least, one chromosome at a time. Um, and, and we can evaluate this on a case-by-case -case basis for one chromosome or one gene. Usually we look at it one gene at a time, and that's where um, we bring in the idea of a Punnett square to think about what possibilities are, um, are at least potentially going to occur and the probability of those po uh, possibilities happening.